Hey everyone, my name is Nick, and today on this episode of Practical Parallelism in C++, we're going to look at doing something non-trivial with uh, pthreads. So up until this point, we've mainly looked at, you know, how do we print some stuff to the screen? Uh, and that's really it. But a lot of times we want to do something a little more useful uh, when we're doing multi-threaded stuff. And really common thing to try to accelerate is linear algebra uh, operations. And so specifically, we're going to try to solve some uh, systems of linear equations. So we're going to have, you know, in equations and in unknowns, and we want to find all those, uh, what all those unknowns are. And we want to do it for really, really uh, large sets of equations. So not just say, you know, 10 equations, 20 equations. What about, you know, 20, 48 equations, or, you know, maybe even 4,096 equations. And so there's quite a amount of parallelism that we can kind of extract and that we can, uh, really exploit to speed these operations up instead of just doing it serially. And we'll look at that today. So first of all, let's talk a little bit about uh, Gaussian elimination and what it does. So here's the basics of Gaussian elimination here. So we start with this matrix of uh, each row represents one linear equation. And each column is going to represent uh, the coefficient of some, vari of some variable. So, you know, this might be uh, 86.3 times a, 41.8 times b, etc. And then each row represents a different equation with the exact same uh, variables. So, uh, but with different coefficients, of course. And what we want to do is reduce it to this bottom, uh, what we see down here. We call this an upper triangular matrix. And we've got ones across the diagonal here. Now, what's the benefit of doing this transformation? Well, it allows us to really easily solve systems of linear equations. Because as you can see here, all the other variables in this last row get, you know, canceled out. They get reduced down to zero, except for this last one. So in this case, if these are variables A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H, that means we know that one times H is going to equal some number. So it's pretty trivially easy to solve for uh, H in that case. And then when we have h, uh, because of this triangular property, we can just substitute that value for h up into the next equation, and then we can solve for g. And we can keep doing that over and over and over. And uh, that's just what we call, we call something called back substitution, because we're just substituting things backwards uh, in kind of a chain. So that's the overall idea. Now, how do we get to this point? Getting to this point is not terribly difficult. All we need to do is, uh, it, so Gaussian elimination consists of two main steps. One of them is this normalization step, and the other one is the actual elimination. So in the normalization step, that's where we make these diagonal elements equal to one. And so we'll do that one row at a time. So to get this first element equal to one, all we need to do is divide uh, this row by, in this case, 86.3. And so we'll divide every element by 86.3. If you're familiar with linear equations, you know that this is a perfectly uh, okay thing for us to do. As long as we, whatever we do to the left side of an equation, we do the right side, um, this is perfectly okay. And so we end up with the one on the diagonal here. Now, another thing we can do, if you remember algebra one, is the, the elimination step. Uh, when we're solving systems of equations. And we can do that for the remaining rows. And all we need to do is multiply every one of these rows by some constant factor, and then multiply it times the first row, and then just subtract the two, right? So after we get uh, reduce this first row, right? So we divide all of these elements by 86.3, and we get uh, this result we can start eliminating all the elements of this row because it's just one times some factor. So in this case, it would be times negative uh, 71.8 because we want to subtract, uh, we want to get rid of that 71.8. Here would be uh, one times negative 24.5, but then we just subtract all of these elements scaled by whatever is in this particular uh, row. So. That's the overall basics. If you want to learn more about that, look up Gaussian elimination or check out, you know, when I live stream, feel free to ask questions or even in the comments. Uh, but the overall process is we'll have one thread at a time doing that normalization step. And then after we do that normalization step, 
all of these remaining rows can do the elimination in parallel. So our parallelism is really restricted to that elimination part. So let's see how we implemented this uh, serially. So if we go back to the common folder, we've got some helper functions and also our serial implementation. And so this is going to look very similar to our parallel code. Here the parallel code, we have to do a little bit of synchronization and some bounds checking. So in our serial code, what do we do? So the first thing we do is we iterate over each of the rows in the matrix except for the last one. And the reason why we don't need to do the last one is because there's really only one element here that's left. Everything else has been eliminated. So trivially, that's just going to be divided down to one. So we don't really need to worry about that one. So we'll look at all the other ones that we will need to eliminate from. And what we'll do is first we'll get the pivot. Now, like I said, I represents the row that we're on. So the pivot is going to be uh, on the diagonal. So it's the row in the column. So it'll be the ith row by here and then the ith column. And then all we do down here is we're going to iterate over the remaining elements in that row and then just divide them by the pivot. So like we saw, uh, oops. Oh, let me go back to that other directory. So go back here to naive. Right. So just like we saw right here, um, we're going to normalize this row first and turn it into something like this. Right. So that's all that we're doing uh, right here. So first we uh, find the pivot and then this step is just dividing. And then finally, uh, this assignment right here, it's because we know that pivot's going to be one, so we can skip out a divide. We know if we divide anything by itself, it'll be one, so we can just not do the divide and just do direct assignment. So then here begins the second part right here. So this is the elimination stage, and we're doing it serially here because this is a single thread. So for all the rows after the pivot, so from i plus one all the way to the end, we're going to a scale what we're subtracting by. So we're going to subtract by a scale times row i. And then we'll just subtract from each of the elements of that row. And of course, the, the same column that the row uh, that the pivot is on, that will be equal to zero. Because like I said, we're eliminating in this step. So every time we get to a pivot, so say for this pivot on row zero, we're eliminating all of these in also in column zero. And then when we get here, we're going to, uh, to the second pivot, we're going to uh, get rid of all of these elements within that column. And so all we're doing right here is uh, for each pivot, we're going to eliminate everything else right there. Okay, and then finally, in the last case, because the last row, the pivot is just going to be uh, the last element and there's nothing else to propagate downwards as far as eliminating downwards, so we can just do direct assignment to be one. Okay, so that's going to be our serial implementation. So let's see what happens when we do this in parallel. So we'll go to utils.h. So we see that it starts the exact same. So we're still going to loop over all the rows in the matrix. And so what we do here is just something a little bit different. So we do have some other stuff in here because it's a pthread function, we do have to pass in a struct of args and then we do unpack them right here. But the main algorithm starts right here, right? And we have this perf cycle right here and all that does is it synchronizes all the threads before we begin the actual Gaussian elimination and it starts some performance counters for us. So we can actually tell the time of how long it takes to run. So what we do here is the first thing we need to do is we need to make sure does this row belong to me? So if we consider uh, this matrix, each thread has to be assigned a specific number of rows. That way we're kind of splitting up our work. So in this basic version, this naive version, we're doing something called block assignment. And with block assignment, every single uh, thread will get the same number of rows and they'll be contiguous, meaning the rows will be next to each other. So if we have two rows, the top four rows, like this, will be assigned to the first thread, and then the bottom four rows will be assigned to the second thread. Right? So very simple. And likewise, if we had four threads, it would be split up, you know, these two rows would go to one thread, 
these two rows would go to one thread. And that means that the, all the eliminations and the normalizations will be done by that thread for those particular rows. So the first thing we do is, of course, to check to see if it belongs to us. So every row, uh, we pass in some variables uh, that gives each thread a, a unique start row and a unique end row. So if the pivot belongs to this thread, it's going to go ahead and do the normalization if we're on that pivot step. Then all the other threads, they hit this P thread barrier weight. Now we haven't seen a barrier before, but barriers are pretty simple. All a barrier does is it waits for a certain number of threads to hit it before they can continue onwards. So in this case, we initialize the barrier um, previously. So if we go to our launch threads function, we have a, uh, a barrier in here. Here we go. So right here is a pthread barrier and a pthread barrier init. And all it says is, you know, I'll take a barrier, I'll take some parameter that will leave default, and then I'll take the number of threads that have to reach this barrier before everyone gets to continue. So if I put a barrier and say num threads is equal to four, all the threads will hold up on the barrier until the last thread, being the fourth thread, reaches it. So that's all, that's all that a barrier does. So that's our synchronization point, because before we can start eliminating, we have to make sure that we're done normalizing uh, that row first. And so that's really the only synchronization that we need, because down here, when we get to the elimination, this all happens in parallel. So all the different rows uh, can start getting rid of the elements in that column uh, independently. And so all we need to do here is each row checks uh, you know, does the row belong to me? Am I responsible for this elimination? And so that's what it does here. So it checks to make sure that, you know, it's within their rows. So it's after the pivot and it's before their end row. And then it makes sure that it is, uh, you know, after its start row and also before its end row. And then down here, all we do is we get that scale factor, just like the serial version. And then, of course, we uh, do the uh, subtraction and then eventual elimination of whatever's in that column. And then down here, it's the exact same case. So the final thread or the thread that gets mapped, the very last row, does the trivial uh, assignment of that pivot to be one. And then we stop our performance monitoring. So that's really the basics of it. Basically, what we do is we make sure that only one thread at a time is doing the... Uh, the normalization side of things. So uh, that's what we do here. And we make sure that no one else kind of proceeds forward with this barrier. And then we just map all the data or the rows to specific threads and they do all of this elimination in parallel independently of each other. So that's going to be it as far as uh, the code goes. Um, there's other functions of, uh, in here that you can feel free to send me a message about if you if you have questions on it I'd be happy to answer but uh, let's look at some performance numbers right so first of all let's go ahead and change this so we don't need to print out the solution uh, we have this verify solution in here as well that checks uh, the serial version against the parallel version to make sure that we're getting the right uh, answer and it'll give us a segmentation fault if we're not so uh, Let's get rid of the prints. That way we can just look at performance numbers. Okay. So let's look at some performance numbers. So for an eight by eight matrix, uh, when we launch two threads, it turns out the, uh, the serial version is faster than the parallel version, right? And quite a bit so in some cases. So this shouldn't be surprising though, because the serial version doesn't have any synchronization. So it can just speed along as fast as it can. Now synchronization does have some overhead. So for very small cases, we don't see much, if any benefit. In fact, it's usually slower. But we can start to uh, increase the size of our matrix and see what happens. So let's see what happens when we turn it to a 64 by 64 matrix. So we'll go ahead and recompile and we'll run it again. So they start getting closer and closer. So now we're almost equivalent. In fact, uh, parallel is actually faster here. So it's just faster, right? 
So let's see what happens if we kind of take this to the extreme, right? A lot of times we want to uh, do a lot more than just, you know, a 64 by 64 matrix. Ah, that's that's small. We want we want to work with big data, right? So let's do say a 1024 by 1024 matrix, right? So let's see how fast we can get. So let's compile it and run it. It takes a little bit longer. So now we're saving about 300 milliseconds and then we can even increase the number of threads. So what happens if now we're launching eight threads instead of just uh, two threads? Okay, so now we're saving about 500 milliseconds. So we can even push this to the extreme. Let's launch 2048 and let's launch 16 threads. So 2048 by 2048 matrix with 16 threads. Oops, I have to compile it first. There we go. So let's see what happens. So this is gonna take a little bit longer to run. All right, so the elapsed time for the parallel version is 3.2 seconds. The serial version is still going, still going, still going. It takes about eight seconds, right? So about a five second difference. So that's over two times faster doing the parallel version. Uh, so that's really going to do it for uh, this example uh, of, you know, this naive version of, uh, of you know, parallel Gaussian elimination. And one thing that we'll look at later on is the fact that not all the threads here have the same amount of work. You know, it might have been obvious to some people, maybe not so obvious for others, but if you notice, the very last row has to do, you know, in the case of an 8 by 8 matrix, the very last row has to do seven eliminations. So it's really just the row number minus one is the number of eliminations it has to do. So if we do that kind of block mapping, we notice that all the threads mapped to the upper blocks do a lot less work than the ones mapped to the lower block. So in the next video, we'll cover that. So that's going to do it for today. As always, feel free to go to my GitHub page at uh, github.com slash coffee before arch where I put all this code. So all of this is going to be in the practical parallelism in C++ in this parallel algorithms folder under P threads and then Here's the naive version that we looked at today. So there's the main function. There's the utils. So feel free to download this, play around with it. So this is a, a basic version of it. So it only handles square matrices. It has a randomizer that just puts random inputs, inputs in there, but it's easily extensible if you say want to, you know, actually solve linear equations. So to, you know, add bag substitution in there. But this is the real crux of the uh, Gaussian elimination uh, um, algorithm, right? So it, this is what dominates most of the time anyway. So we really focus on those key things when we're you know, designing parallel stuff. Uh, we can optimize stuff like the back substitution uh, later on. We really wanna focus, you know, Amdahl's law says, make the common case fast. So this is the common case. So like I said, feel free to play around with it. Links to the other videos are over here, my email's here if you have any questions. Uh, I stream on Twitch, links below. So I'm Nick from Coffee Before Arch and I hope you, you have, have a nice day. day.